One of the things we've added is a new type of published parameter um, and it's called attribute name. So this is a way to let the user pick an attribute um, directly and we used to be able to do that with the, um, the attribute setter and there was a, sort of that workaround. Well now we've actually got a, a published parameter that lets you do that. So here for example I've got three attributes, one, two and three and I'm concatenating them together and basically I've published the parameters to let the user choose um, which attribute uh, we're, we're they're going to use. So we just run this, they can pick attribute one, two or three and we run it and it comes up and so it says somewhere in the log um, the chosen attribute is attribute oops, the chosen attribute is attribute two and its value is value two. So that's a way to let the user pick uh, an attribute to use, which I guess you might want to use for writing metadata or just um, concatenating certain things together. Um, the other way, the other place I found it useful is, um, and, and since we're on the subject, I'll, I'll go into this. Um, say label point replacer. Um, if I want the user to be able to select um, an attribute for attribute height. Uh, if I say create a user parameter, um, click OK, now we do prompt and run, the user can select an attribute but they can also start typing numbers in. And say I don't want them to do that, I just want them to be able to select an attribute. So what we do is we create one of these um, attributes only parameter, I'm just going to give it a random name and prompt, duh, 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 duh. and now basically there instead of using the, the parameter I created, I would link it to that new one, which is an attributes only. So now when I prompt and run for that, I can select an attribute, but I can't type in a value. So that's a way of stopping the user typing in values as well. So there's a few uses for that um, new type of parameter.